Okay, so today we'll cover revenue recognition on franchises. No? But um, like I said, as we go along the way, we'll review yung uh, five steps, no? five step process on revenue recognition. No? So PFR is 815. No? So basically for the second half of the uh, second half of special accounting for special transactions, it will deal with revenue recognition. So previously we've covered uh, long-term contracts, tapos uh, installment and consignment. So today uh, we'll have revenue recognition on franchises. So franchise is a contractual arrangement with the franchisor according to which the franchisor permits the franchisee to use the franchisor's business name trademark, manufacture or sell the franchisor's products or services, and use the franchisor's business system that will operate the franchise outlet in certain geographical area or location. So parang ganito lang yan, class, para at least mas madaling intindihin. So I'm sure, um, I'm, I'm not sure pala in, in Cavite, but well, I'm also in Cavite, no, Baco or uh, but I don't use tap water, no? So, may order ako dito, crystal clear. No? So, yung crystal clear, as you know, it's present in uh, different areas in the Philippines. So, it's a well-known um, brand of uh, purified water or, or distilled water. So, uh, yung owner ng crystal clear brand, sila yung franchisor. Ngayon, kung halimbawa, for example, si Brill, si Brill wants to set up a franchise of Crystal Clear kasi nga, Crystal Clear is a brand name that we can trust. No? Pwede siyang uh, mag-enter into contract of franchise, siya ngayon yung magiging franchisee. Okay? Para at least kasi, uh, back in the undergrad, ako rin, nalilito. Ano ba yung franchise or ano ba yung franchisee? So, para at least as early as now, eh, uh, magkaroon tayo ng, ano ba yun? Yung hindi mo na kailangan i-memorize yung definition. Let's go straight to the example. No? So, si Crystal Clear is the franchise or basically the person who owns the, the, the Crystal Clear. No? So, tapos in-offer na nila yan to franchise. So, nagkakaroon tayo ngayon ng uh, relationship no so tayo yung kung gamitin natin yung yung trademark or yung brand ng uh, Crystal Clear we are now called the franchisee okay so like uh, in my case no i'm planning to franchise a mango float no? so a friend of mine um, basically developed no uh, yung yung mango float business so he started it five years ago, tapos ngayon, they're now opening it for franchise. So, ngayon, uh, we're talking with them uh, along with my other friends to set up a branch in Pampanga. So, very exciting times kasi uh, we're planning to uh, start it uh, before the summer. No? So, ang target namin is March or April. No? So, yun. Uh, at least, no, at, as early as now, alam natin, the, pro, the, the entity or the owner of the business is the franchisor. Tayo ngayon is the franchisee. Now, in terms of the revenue recognition, actually, uh, we're going to talk about the franchisor's side. Okay? So like I said, no, ang gagawin natin is really a review of PFRS 15. Okay, so revenue recognition, there are five steps, as you know. So ulitin lang natin pala at last. Step one, identify the contract. So in this case, since we're dealing with franchise, the contract is franchise. Step two, identify the performance obligation. So when we say, when we say performance obligation, this is the uh, actual, actual performance of the uh, transaction, no? Uh, of the franchisor. No? Number three, determine the transaction price. Question, pwede bang isa lang ang transaction price and then there are multiple performance obligations? 
The answer is yes. That's why number four or step four, we have to allocate the transaction price. How are we going to allocate the transaction price? Now, PFRS uh, mentioned about uh, the method called the use to use the relative uh, sales price. So later on, we'll also discuss that. And then finally, step five, recognize the revenue. So at the class, ang gagawin natin is we'll apply all those five steps using discussion problem number one. So let me just read the problem first. The requirement is what is the total revenue to be reported by the franchisor for the year ended December 31, 2021. So on January 1, 2021, a franchisor entered into a franchise agreement with the franchisee, which requires the latter to pay a non-refundable upfront fee of 800000 at the signing of the contract and an ongoing payment of royalty equal to 5% of the sales of the franchisee or the class. Uh, in this case, diba, balikan natin to. Sabi dyan, uh, determine the transaction price. No? So in franchise, there are actually three um, uh, three transaction price. No? So namely, number one, we have the um, initial franchise fee. Number two, we have the continuing franchise fee. And then finally, uh, we have the interest. No? So basically, the interest, uh, we derive it kung nagpautang tayo. No? So if there's a note uh, receivable. No? So, uh, so in this case, dito tayo sa ano muna, uh, paragraph 1. So pansinin, this 800,000, this represents the initial franchise fee. Now, the 5% of the sales of the franchisee, this represents the continuing franchise fee. No? So later on, we'll uh, go back to the five steps. Tapos, isaysay natin lahat ng details using problem one so that uh, it will be easier to absorb the uh, the concept no, of the franchise. Okay? So let me continue. On the date of the signing of the contract, the franchisee paid the non-refundable upfront fee or the initial franchise fee. As part of the franchise agreement, the franchisor shall render the following performance obligations. So, ito na. na mention na. So, kasi pansinin, sabi dyan, step number two, identify the performance obligations. No? So, now, oops. good thing about this problem is that all the performance obligations are provided. No? In fact, um, it, it's been put in a New, numeral form. No? So, Roman numeral number one, training 10 personnel of the franchisee with standalone selling price of 100000 Number two, construction of the franchisee's building and landscape with standalone selling price of 400000 Number three, delivery of the 1,000 units of raw materials to franchise with standalone selling price price of 300,000 and number 4 allowing the franchisee to use the franchise or trademark and trade name for a term of 10 years starting from January 1, 2021 with standalone selling price of 200,000 at the class diba pansinin step 1 identify the contract the contract is franchise contract of franchise number 2 identify the performance obligations so what are the performance obligations in problem number one? So training of 10 personnel. Performance obligation number two, construction of the building and landscape. And then number three, delivery of the units of raw materials. And then finally, number four, use of franchise or trademarks. So these are the performance obligations. Okay, so tuloy ko lang muna yung problem. So as of the end of December 31, 2021, the accounting department of the franchisor obtained the following information. So the franchisor was able to train seven out of ten personnel of the franchisee. So pansin in the, pers the uh, uh, performance obligation, number one, is to train ten personnel. Ilan yun na train? Seven. 
Number two, the percentage of completion of the construction of the franchise's building and landscape was estimated by the engineer and architect at 90%, although the building was fully completed because the landscape was not yet started. So 90% completed na daw. Number three, 600 units of raw materials were already delivered to the franchisee. E ilan ba yung commitment? 1,000 units. So later, pag-usapan ba natin yan? Number four, for the year ended December 31, 2021, the franchise or ito class, uh, it should be franchisee. So the franchisee reported sales revenue amounting to 100,000 because it already started operation upon the construction of the building on October 1, 2021. Ito, pakipalitan na lang, no? it should be franchise. Okay, so ang tinatang dito, what is the total revenue? No? So like I said, uh, we'll use problem number one to go about the different steps no? to recognize revenue. No? So step one, ulit, ulitin natin, determine the contract price. So the, con the, the sorry, determine the contract. No? So the contract in Problem number one is contract of franchise. Revenue recognition step number two, determine the performance obligation. No? So, na-determine natin yan, uh, there are four performance obligations. Namely, number one, di ba, training of 10 personnel. Number two, construction of building and landscape. Number three, delivery of raw materials. And number four, use of trademark and trade name. Okay, so okay pa tayo, no? So, ang maganda kasi class sa revenue recognition and maganda sa PFRS 15 is that it made the process easier kasi nga, there are steps, there are procedures that we have to follow in order for us to do proper accounting. Okay? So, good thing is also, uh, back in my time, uh, walang PFRS 15. So it was only uh, introduced in 2018. Okay. okay. So next step, determine the transaction price. Earlier, I mentioned that uh, in, in contract of franchise, tra transaction price are actually composed of three items. No? So we have initial franchise fee. So, saan pwede mangyari yan? Uh, it could be uh, through down payment. No? So, uh, in, in problem number one, na, nakita natin na uh, actually there's no down payment but uh, upfront fee. No? So, pwede rin kasi na magkaroon ka ng notes receivable. No? So, value of the note. No? If the note is interest bearing, so the valuation would be the face amount. If it's non-interest bearing, so it it, it will be the present value. Next, we have the continuing franchise fee. Ito na nga yung tinatawag natin, percentage of sales. And finally, interest. So if the notes is interest bearing, so to compute for the interest, it's face amount multiplied by the nominal rate. So pag sinabi natin nominal rate, we say it's the coupon rate. It's the rate that you can find uh, in the notes. No? Now, if it's non-interest bearing, it's the carrying amount multiplied by the effective rate. Okay? So, don't worry, class. No? So, later on, we'll go back to problem number one and we'll apply all this um, uh, formula and all these steps. No? So, ginagawa lang natin muna is we're going back to reviewing no? those uh, five steps no? to recognize revenue. Number four, allocate the transaction price. No? So the standard provides for uh, an approach no? to use the relative standalone selling prices. No? So if we go back to problem number one, pansin din that uh, along with the performance obligations, standalone selling prices are also given. Okay, So training 10 personnel, magandang standalone selling price, 100,000. Construction standalone price is four hundred thousand, and the delivery of the raw materials, the standalone selling price is three hundred thousand. The use of the franchise or trademark and trade name has a standalone selling price of two hundred thousand. Okay, 
So at least, no? um, in order to allocate the transaction price, we have to use the standalone selling prices. Now, how are, are we now going to recognize revenue, which is step five? No? So over time, if one of these three conditions is met, so, tandaan class, ha? there are three conditions to apply the, the revenue over time. Hindi mo kailangan ma-meet lahat yan. All you, have, all you need to uh, make sure is that at least one, one of these three conditions is met prior to using over time. And then recognize that kung hindi naman na-meet yung, yung uh, conditions na to, then point in time. Okay? So those are the five steps uh, that we need to use to recognize the revenue. Okay, so balikan ngayon natin yung problem number one. Ito class, uh, what I provided in the Excel file is also a cheat sheet. No? Para at least meron ka ng guide. So ulitin natin, no? step one, identify the contract. Step two, identify the performance obligations. So you have to really go through these steps no? in chronological order. No? So you have to identify the contract first. Next, identify the performance obligations. And then step three, determine the transaction price. And like I said, in franchise, there are three compositions of the transaction price, namely the inter initial franchise fee, the continuing franchise fee, and the interest. Step four, now we have to allocate the transaction price using the relative standalone selling prices. Bakit kailangan ng allocation? Remember earlier, sabi natin, possible na there's only one transaction price, eh, pero maraming performance obligations. Just like, in problem number one. Pansinin, in problem number one, there are four performance obligations. Meron, ilan ba yung transaction price na meron tayo doon? So, na-determine natin that there's initial franchise fee. Mamaya, babalikan natin yan. We have to allocate the initial franchise fee among the four um, performance obligations using the relative standalone selling prices. And then finally, number five, like I said, we have to recognize, recognize the revenue over time if one of the three conditions is met. So customer consumes the benefit as work performed. Customer controls the asset at, as it is created. And finally, seller is creating an asset that has, that has no alternative use. And seller has the right to receive the payment for work completed. Okay, so those are the five steps. Now, going back to problem number one. Ito na, ito yung problem number one. Oops. So, step one. Malitang screen ko, pero nandiyan din siya side by side. So, ganito lang muna siguro. Step one. Uh, what is the contract? So the contract is franchise. So franchisor entered into a franchise agreement with the franchisee. Number two, identify the performance obligations. No? So in problem number one, there are four performance obligations. Namely, number one, performance obligation one, training. Performance obligation two, Construction of the franchise building and landscape. Performance obligation three, delivery of raw materials. Performance obligation four, use of trademark. Okay. Now, step number three, determine the transaction price. So, ito. Ano-ano ba yung mga transaction price natin dyan? Pansinin. The franchisor entered into franchise agreement with a non-refundable upfront fee or the initial franchise fee of 800000 upon signing. And ito na yung ongoing, no? so continuing franchise fee of 5% of the sales of the franchise. Okay, so we have the initial franchise fee of 800000 
So, step number four is to allocate the transaction price. So, ano nga ulit yung gagamitin natin na method to, you, to, to allocate the transaction price? No? So, sabi natin, we have to allocate it using the relative standalone selling prices. So, for training, ang standalone selling price is 100,000. For construction, it's 400,000. Plus, ha, para at least nasusundan pa rin naman natin. Number three, uh, delivery of raw materials, standalone price is 300,000. And then finally, use of trademark, the standalone price is 200,000. So just get the sum. So meron tayo ngayon total of 1 million. But remember, ang meron lang tayo is 800,000 na initial franchise fee. So therefore, we have to allocate this 1 million you have to allocate 800,000 based on the standalone selling prices. So 800,000 multiplied by 100 over 1,000 or 100,000 over 1 million. So we're just going to uh, derive a ratio. No? So that's 800,000 multiplied by 100 over 1,000. So that's 80,000. For a construction, 800,000 multiplied by 400 over 1,000. So that's 320,000. Number four, delivery of the raw materials. So that's 300, that's 800,000 multiplied by 300 over 1,000. So that's 240,000. Ito class, uh, kung napansin nyo, nakaan naman tayo, nakalink naman tayo. So kita pa rin yung formula dyan. No? So that's 800,000 multiplied by 300,000 over 1 million. For the trademark, it's 800,000 multiplied by 200 over 1,000. So that's 160,000. So just get the sum, ayun, 800,000. So meaning we have allocated it correctly. Okay, so that's step number four. Next step is recognize the revenue. So sabi natin, we use the uh, overtime approach. No? Kasi, uh, um, the problem clearly shows us that we have met those conditions. No? So, paano ngayon natin gagawin yan? Tignan natin itong problem. No? So, the franchisor was able to train 7 out of 10. So, pansinin, this 80,000 represents 10 personnel. No? So, 80,000 multiplied by 7 over 10. Saan nakuha yung 7? Ayun, 7 lang kasi yung na-train pa lang. So, 80,000 multiplied by 7 over 10. So, we have 56,000. Next, on the construction of the building, sabi dyan, 90% completed. So, therefore, 320,000 multiplied by 90%. So, that's 288,000. Next, on the delivery of the raw materials, sabi dito, 600,000 units were delivered. So therefore, 240,000 multiplied by 600 over 1,000. So we have 144,000. And then finally, on the use of the franchise, uh, franchisor's trademark, so 10 years. So year one is used. No? So 160,000 over 10, 10 years. No? So that would be 16,000 pesos. So just get the sum. So makukuha natin is... 504,000. Anong tawag dito sa 504,000? This is the revenue from the initial franchise fee. Okay? Nandito yung tayo sa step 5 plus ha. Next, meron ba tayong continuing franchise fee? So, pansinin, meron siyang uh, data uh, for the year ended December 31, the franchisee reported sales revenue amounting to 100,000. Ano ba yung agreement nila? 5% of the total sales. So therefore, 100,000 multiplied by 5%. So that's 5,000. This represents continuing franchise fee. Hmm. Okay. 
Ang question sa atin in uh, problem number one is, what is the total revenue to be reported by the franchisor for the year ended December 31, 2021? So the answer is 509,000. Okay? So ulitin ko to class, ha? it's very critical to follow the five steps to uh, recognize the revenue. So recap lang ulit using problem number one. Step one, determine the contract or identify the contract. So the contract is a franchise. Step two, identify the performance obligations. So in this problem, there are four performance obligations. Step three, determine the transaction price. So uh, in franchise, in, in franchise agreement, there are three composition of the transaction price. Namely, the initial franchise fee, continuing franchise fee, and the interest. Step four, allocate the transaction price. Kasi earlier, sabi natin, there, might, there could be one uh, transaction price only, but uh, there may be different performance obligations or multiple performance obligations just like in problem number one. So therefore, we have to allocate the transaction price. Pero paano? We have to use the relative standalone selling prices. And then finally, recognize the revenue over time if one of the three conditions is met. Okay? So ganun yung gagawin nating uh, procedure on uh, revenue recognition. Okay, so para siguro mas ma-absorb ba yung concept, let's have another problem. So let's have problem number two. Problem number two is more complex kasi uh, it now has uh, notes receivable. So meron tayong note receivable. So let me read the requirements first. If the collection of the note receivable is reasonably assured, what is the gross profit to be recognized by the entity for the year ended December 31, 2020 in relation to the initial franchise fee? Once in end, the question is gross profit. Number two, if the collection of the note receivable is reasonably assured, what is the net income to be reported by the entity for the year ended December 31, 2020? Pansinen, in requirement number two, the question is the net income. Okay? So requirement one is gross profit. Number two is net income. And as you know, dun lang sa, uh, sa traditional income statement natin, for us to come up with the net income, kaya nga siya net, so ibig sabihin, meron mga dinedetak. So in problem number two, pag-uusapan natin, what are the items being deducted to derive the net income. Okay? So on January 1, 2020, an entity granted a franchise agreement to a franchisee. The contract provided that the franchisee shall pay an initial franchise fee of 500000 and ongoing payment of royalties equivalent to 8% of the sales of the franchisee. On January 1, 2020, the franchisee paid down payment of 200000 and issued a year a three-year non-interest bearing note for the balance payable in three equal annual installments starting December 31, 2020. <clears throat> the note has present value of 240183 with effective interest rate of 12%. <clears throat> On June 30, 2020, the entity completed the performance obligations of franchise at a cost of 352146 Aside from that, the entity incurred indirect costs of 22009 Pansinin na, meron dito ang tinatawag na indirect costs. Later on, pag-uusapan natin yan. 
the franchisee started operations on July 1, 2020 and reported sales revenue amounting to 50,000 pesos for the year ended December 31, 2020. So the franchisee paid the first installment on its due date. Okay, so let's have problem number two. Okay, so ulitin natin yung steps na ginawa natin kanina. So step one, identify the contract. So the contract is a franchise agreement. Step number two, performance obligations. No? So in this case kasi, uh, the entity completed the performance obligation at of the franchise at a cost of 352,146. So clearly, hindi dito mention kung ano yung performance obligation. But in paragraph 3, it's clearly mentioned that it has completed the performance obligation. Okay. Step number 3, determine the transaction price. So balikan lang natin yung cheat sheet natin or yung pinaka-guide natin kanina. Sabi natin, uh, determine the transaction price, so initial franchise fee, and it could be from down payment, it could be an upfront payment, no? gaya nung sa problem number one, di ba meron tayo doon non-refundable uh, franchise fee, upfront fee of 800,000. So in this case, in problem number two, down payment naman. So the entity, uh, the contract provided that the franchise, franchisee pay an initial franchisee of 500,000 and ongoing payment of royalties. So 500,000 yung usapan nila. On January 1, 2020, the franchisee paid down payment of 200,000. So time 200,000 down payment. And issued a three-year issued a three-year note, uh, non-interest bearing. No? So, sabi natin pag non-interest bearing, the valuation to use is the present value, and the present value is two hundred forty thousand one hundred eighty-three. Now, isay na natin yung transaction price. So, down payment is two hundred thousand. Non-interest bearing, sabi natin present value is 240,183. So we get the initial franchise fee of 440,183. Less direct cost. So the ang direct cost natin dito would be 352,146. So the entity completed the performance obligation of the franchise at a cost of 352,146. Paano ba yan determine? So, uh, ano ba yung mga uh, direct cost na yan? So, remember, pag-usapan na lang natin yung uh, problem number one. Obviously, in problem number one, uh, it's clearly, clearly there are four performance obligations given, di ba? Mas maganda kasing example yung one. Balikan natin to ha. Diba mayroon dyan training of 10 personnel. Obviously, as you train those 10 personnel, si franchisor, si franchisor, or in our example earlier, si Crystal Clear will uh, incur expenses in relation to the training of those 10 personnel. So pa pwedeng nag uh, pwedeng nag-rent sila ng events place or a small space to do their training. Possible naman in number two, construction of the franchise is building. Nag-hire sila ng architects and engineers, uh, materials to build the building and the landscape. So yun yung mga direct costs. Number three, raw materials. Obviously, the franchisor or crystal clear will have to source out uh, raw materials as well. So possible na 
kung ang pinag-uusapan natin is mango float, oh, so ang mga raw materials niyan will be the, the creamer, uh, sugar, uh, mangoes. Uh, number four, well, use of trademark and, and the, and the uh, franchise or trade name. Okay? So, ganun yung class. No? So, those um, costs directly uh, with the directly attributable to the performance of the obligation of, of the performance obligation uh, uh, will have to be considered as direct cost. So the initial franchise fee less the direct cost, so we get the gross profit. In class A, please, uh, I hope this is clear, no? So, kanina kasi, ang pinumpit lang natin in problem number one is the total revenue. No? So, kung ang total revenue yung pag-uusapan, uh, actually, this is the 440,183. But if it's gross profit, so we have to deduct direct costs. Okay? Parang ano yan, uh, sa traditional na statement mo, meron kang sales, less cost of sales equals gross profit. Now, in this case, in, in, in the case of the franchise agreement or contract of franchise, the initial franchise fee represents the sales or total sales. No? Then the direct cost represents your cost of sales to arrive to the gross profit. Okay? So that's uh, requirement number one. So we don't need to allocate kasi nga, there's only one performance obligation and there's only one transaction price. No? So we can skip step number four, but make sure uh, that in doing so, eh, wala talagang ibang performance obligation. No? Kasi uh, like I said, uh, like uh, in problem number one, then there are multiple performance obligations. No? So this could be uh, the scenario no? in, in, I mean, in, in real life. No? Uh, ang pwede ko kasing gawin is I, I can share with you yung maging experience ko when, I, when we enter into a franchise agreement with a certain brand of mango float. Well, exciting times. No? At least uh, we'll be able to apply itong mga pinag-aaralan natin na PFRS 15. Okay, sige. So, tuloy natin yung problem number two. So, problem number two, if the collection of the note receivable is reasonably assured, what is the net income to be reported by the entity for the year ended December 31, 2020. So, we have now have the gross profit. So imagine mo lang, uh, you are uh, computing for uh, or preparing your traditional income statement. Diba? You have your total sales revenue, less cost of sales, you get uh, gross profit. Ano bang less mo sa gross profit? All your uh, operating expenses, no? selling and administrative and general expenses, SEG mo, uh, less less mo yun to get to your net income. So, ganun din naman dito sa franchise uh, contract. So, we have determined our gross profit earlier from requirement number one. So, that's 88,037. Now, meron pa ba tayong ibang mga uh, other, other revenues? Other revenue streams? So, we have the Continuing franchise fee. Pansinen, uh, the franchisee started operation and reported sales revenue amounting to 50,000. So 50,000 multiplied by 8%. So that's 4,000 pesos. And then other revenue stream would be the interest. No? So in this case class, it's non-interest bearing. So it's the carrying amount multiplied by the effective rate or 240,183 multiplied by 
no? So that's 28,822. So now we compute our total gross income less the operating expenses. No? So operating expenses would be the different indirect costs. So indirect costs could be, well, your own operation. No? So possibly, uh, as crystal clear, meron ka rin naman siguro mga empleyado, meron ka rin own office no? to monitor you all your or all your franchises operations. No? Uh, you also pay a certain third-party uh, platform no? where you can drop all your uh, franchises gross revenues or gross sales for the day or on monthly basis. So yun yung maganda class sa franchise. No? Uh, so that will form part of your operating expenses. No? So that would be 22,009 and that's also given. So entity incurred indirect costs Twenty-two thousand zero zero nine, okay. So one hundred twenty thousand eight hundred fifty-nine less indirect costs of twenty-two thousand zero zero nine. So that's ninety-eight thousand eight hundred fifty. Okay. So that would be your net income. So kung napansin nyo, in problem number two, uh, we basically completed the whole uh, income statement oh, of the franchisor. So we started with the initial franchise fee or the total revenue less the uh, direct cost to arrive to your gross profit and then we add all other revenue streams. No? So in franchise, we have this continuing franchise fee. We have this interest. No? So in this case, kasi merong notes uh, receivable. So it's, an, it's a non-interest bearing notes. So we have to calculate, uh, calculate as well the uh, interest. So to get the total gross income. Afterwards, we have to deduct the operating expenses. So that's the indirect cost. Okay, so net income is 98,850. Pero pansinin class, uh, whether problem one or problem two, we have to go back to the five steps. So ulitin natin yung Five steps. Step one, identify the contract. And mind you, class, no? So the very reason why I keep on repeating these five steps, because all throughout the remaining uh, remaining topics no, for the second half of the accounting for special transactions, we'll have to deal with revenue recognition. So itong five steps na to, inuulit-ulit natin kasi this will apply to all other topics. So step one, identify the contract. Step two, identify the performance obligations. Step three, determine the transaction price. And step four, allocate the transaction price. And finally, recognize the revenue. Now let's pause for five minute break. Ngayon yung mga class bidel natin. Uh, may chat-chat lang ako sa Viber. No? So pause muna tayo for five minute break class. Thank you.